Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to draw portraits. And there is, the reason I'm doing this as a half-face portrait, and that's the reason that I call it the half-face portrait, is that we have a half a face there at any point in time for you to work from. So here's one example. And you do take off the other half and then draw the other half in afterwards. So uh, I have these just to show you the steps along the way. I also wanted you to see the fact that even though the final one may look nice on pictures, so like this one came from this picture, even though the final one looks really nice, the fact of the matter is things look kind of goofy when you're drawing along the way. And that one's a good example of where that's the case. Um, the other ones that I have here that are part way along the way is this one to show you that things don't look perfect for a while. Um, also this one where I only have the half there at the time. Uh, just the thing is to not give up along the way. So this one starts from the very base of the idea of how, how crude it actually starts and then working your way up, continuing to draw and getting nearer to the final one. And just some other ones here. So this one's only part way down on one side, nearly all the way down on the other side. This one, nearly all the way done. Uh, this one I specifically have to show you how to get the light lines into there, and we'll show you that later on. So, and then this one is another really good example of here is the final picture, and then here is working your way up. So it starts with hardly anything on the page, working your way up to a little bit of shading, up to the final with everything shaded in and worked on it. This. I do this kind of stage in the first day or so, then I keep working on it for several days after that to get to that stage. So I'm just going to use um, this one to start with and show you how this begins. So you just start with a blank sheet of paper and lay that down here. And when you decide where you're going to cut, uh, I do want you to Pick a picture that you can do like halfway down through the nose, mouth, and everything. Um, this one happens to be pretty close to the center, and it already was cut apart once. I'm just going to cut the tape through. But just so you get the idea, what you would do is cut all the way through the middle of the mouth, nose, all that kind of stuff. So finish this one out here. I'm going to lay one side on here. Now. I'm right-handed, so I usually do draw on the right side before I go to draw the left side in. Uh, you just have a little bit easier time working with the right side a lot of times, because it's the side you're more comfortable with your hand moving on. Uh, so I'm going to tape on the extra little piece here. I'm going to make sure that I get this right to the corner of the page. If you have any troubles printing these out full size, let me know. I will definitely help you out with that. Uh, and not a big piece of tape. Make sure that it's just a little piece of tape going over the edges, just top and bottom. You're going to need to take that off again, and you're also going to need to make sure that no tape, like the sticky part of the tape, isn't sticking down on the surface that you're going to be drawing on afterwards. If that ever sticks on there, you end up with a little bit of that sticky left, stuff left, and it will never shade correctly again underneath it. So make sure that's just around the edges like that and not very much when you're working on it. So the first one, I'm going to keep the second side near me really close. The reason to have this here is not only to figure out where things are placed and all that kind of stuff, it's also to figure out the shading on people. And that is the number one thing that goes wrong with people when they first start um, working on anything along the way is that they leave the shading way too light. You need to get dark, and that's why that other half is there. Um, people try to pull the, yeah, but he was white kind of thing. Well, there is nobody walking around the earth with a the shade of face that is this shade of paper. So no matter what, you need to do shading on the, the picture. So, and this one, you know, not only does he have quite a bit of a tan, but he also, um, the picture is printed relatively dark, so I'm gonna do shading across everywhere on this. Uh, the very first part of this, I'm gonna actually turn the picture to the side, and I'm just gonna give myself some reference points. This is just kind of the first step along the way of learning how to draw on things. Uh, you know, obviously, eventually you want to learn from actually sitting there and looking across the table at somebody or, or something like that. 
But the fact is, you have to learn step by step. And this is one of the first scaffolding steps on the way. So the first one, I'm going to let you figure out where things are actually placed on there. I'm going to put my wrist down onto the paper and put my hand on there. I'm going to just hover over the paper with where the pencil point is. And I'm going to make a couple of marks. You don't have to make marks everywhere, just kind of where the sides of the eyes are. The eyes are one of the hardest things to get the right sizing to begin with. So I'm just going to quick put a few marks here. Be a little careful that you know whether you're going from the white of the eye or whether you're going from where the darkness around the eye goes to. So I'm going to make a couple other marks out to the darkness. He does actually have eyeliner on in this picture, so um, does go out a little ways. Uh, so I'm just going to get that on there really quick, and I'm going to figure out where the corner of the mouth is over here. And I'm also going to figure out where the cheekbone is. Just make sure you line this up every time that you put this back on to here. So I'm going to figure out where the cheekbone is. I'm going to go out into the darkness of where that was. And up here at the edge of the head. And that's all I'm going to do for marks along the way here. So um, I'm going to flip this around then. Put it back where you can see it better here. And then I'm going to keep this right next to it because my eyes are going to continuously go between the picture and what I'm drawing. And also, always hold your pencil back quite a ways when you're working on it. You should be in sketch mode with your pencil, not in writing mode. If you're in writing mode, not only are you going to push way too, too hard, but you're also going to be very, very, like, I don't know, strict on where your hand is going. You want to be very loose on what you're working with, so it's more your wrist and kind of your finger motion that's making this. So I'm going to look between on the eye. I'm going to go up to there. I'm going to keep going down through. And by the way, I've taught myself to be able to talk and do this at the same time. The first times I ever did this kind of a, a drawing, it never worked out because your talking and drawing exist on two different sides of your brain. The right side actually controls all your drawing. The left side controls the writing or the like talking. Those do not work well together. One side usually has to dominate it over the other one. So when you first start doing this, I want you to try to not talk to anybody because that will pull you into your left side and your right side won't work as well at that point in time. So, But I've trained myself throughout the years to be able to talk as I do this, but I kind of stumble and stammer a little bit when I do this too still. So um, when I finish a drawing, I can't talk at all. I have to set it back, not pay any attention to anybody else or do it at night when I don't have anybody around. And then I can focus on what I'm doing and actually do a really good job at drawing. So um, so try that out and see what happens. Um, so the eye within here, you don't see the full eye on it. If you were to see all of the circle in here, that's if somebody's really, really like excited or their eyes, they're scared or something like that. Your eyes are never that wide open really when you're looking at it. So make sure you're not putting the whole circle in there. Make sure you're looking across and seeing what you're drawing here. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit of an idea where the darkness is. And that's all I'm going to do right now. I want to get the big stuff on there first before I do anything major otherwise and go in and shade. So the only other line that I actually want you to put on here is the line inside of the mouth, like in between the lips right here. That's the only other line. Everywhere else should be the side of your pencil that you use at all times. Because if you use a line, like if I tried to put in the bottom of this lip using a line there, you'd never be able to make it look real again. So it makes it look like a cartoon and it makes it look very flat. So make sure that and that are your only lines that you actually use. So from here on in, I'm going to use the tip or the side. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a shadow where that's going to go. A little bit of a shadow going down through the lips here. And that's all I'm going to do right now. I'm going to come back and do a lot of that stuff later on. Um, the nose is where everybody gets messed up. Do not, do not, do not use a line on the nose because it will, you just won't be able to make it look like a nose again. So side of your pencil, and this is where it seems weird, you're going to be just shading in basically this big area of darkness. And... This is where people kind of stop and they go, oh, that doesn't look right, and they don't want to keep going. Um, don't do that. Don't let yourself talk yourself out of this at all for a long time. I'm just going to put shadow down. And on the side of the cheek here, I'm going to shade in an angle, 
kind of a curve as it comes near the edge because I'm following the cheekbone. This is following the contour is what it's called. So I'm just going to fill out a little bit of shading here and go up through here. And it is picking up the shading okay on the drawing, so that's good. Okay, I am going to just give a quick to figure out where the edge of the face is here. He has a very angular face, um, especially where the shadows are here. So just a quick reference where that is and kind of a, a figuring out where the side of the head is going to go there. This can all get a little bit of a shadow to it too. Here, I don't want to go, you know, any which way when I'm shading. I want to make sure, again, that I'm following the contour as I do this. So, going in the same direction, I can get the feeling of those um, wrinkles that are on there in, the, in that from that. So, there's the basics. Now, a paper towel works really good for a lot of shading on things, and especially when it comes to the face. This is personal preference. You totally do not need to do the shading like this, but um, sometimes it helps to start this way. Some people love to see all of those marks afterwards and like the active marks to it. Um, totally, like I said, personal preference. I kind of like to blend it in to start with, and then if I want to leave some marks later on, I certainly can. Again, here, I don't just go any which direction. I follow the same kind of feel of the curves of the face and the head as I'm working on it. I'm a little careful when I get down near the eye. I don't want to do a lot of shading across the eye. Okay, so there's my basis. Okay, now that just wiped a lot of stuff out of there, so I'm going to have to go back in and do a lot of, of adding in. Um, the nose, I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to do this top part right here along the edge first. Get a feel for that. I do want to see how wide that nostril is, so I'm going to real quick check and make sure that the edge of the nostril is in the right spot here. And keep that near it. Nobody ever said that this needs to say um, straight up and down, though, when you're drawing it, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little shading on the side here. I'm just pushing a little bit harder on my pencil, but don't push real hard until you get down to the final shading. Um, just giving it some sh some kind of shape going throughout it here. A little bit of darkness underneath. Usually nostrils are pretty dark. This situation it actually is shining up from a light underneath. Um, and the scruff under here, I'm going to use kind of the tip of the pencil, but I'm going to do it in kind of a, a way that Kind of fill in, but enough so that you can see between. There's a little bit of darkness under the nose. Do a little bit more blending just to get that edge kind of nicer. And then I'm going to go into the eye. And again, with it right next to it so I can see what's going on. Use the tip of my pencil again. This is pretty dark around the edge. and start in with kind of the wrinkles that are around it. Again, don't do this until you're sure that you have it in the right spot. Don't forget to leave the little kind of glint on the eye that's the white. So there is the rest of the pupil. I'm going to go in, in this direction going around to kind of spokes coming around the outside and fill that in. Do not leave the white of the eye truly white. If you leave it truly white, people don't look right. They look like a ghost. So you need to shade in just a little bit. His eyes are actually a little bit bloodshot in this. So I'm going to put a little bit of that over there. I'm going to fill out here. And I'm going to start working a little bit faster. So I'm going to quiet down a little bit as I finish out some of this stuff. To check where his eyebrow comes to. 
talking about there. Go in the same direction that the hair grows. So eyebrow hair kind of grows at an angle here. Don't use erasers too much on the face because you can break the surface, but if you need to, if you went over an area too much, you can. And darken in. So now, I think I just got his eyebrow too far up. There's a lot of working back and forth at this stage. Okay, now going through here. It's a little bit scruffy in the shadows here too. So I'm going to be a little bit rough at what I do on the edges here. Constantly looking at the face. You should never ever be drawing without this half next to you. If you are, you're making things up. And it's amazing what our brains make up in life, um, especially when it comes to drawing. We never look at anything the way that we actually need to, to be able to draw it. If that were the case, we would never make it out of the bathroom in the morning because we'd all be very enthralled with how the shade goes as it goes around the edge of the toothpaste and all this kind of stuff. You would never make it anywhere. So you need to, when you're drawing, you need to shut the rest of the world off and actually pay attention to all that stuff. Okay, and again, I'm going to quiet down and get a little bit faster here. The edge of the lip, just going to get it a little bit darker. It gets darker towards the center on the bottom. And then actually there's a little bit of spokes coming out of here too, just kind of the creases on the lip. And then it's actually darkness under the lip. That surprises everybody. They think they need to shade in that bottom lip, and really it's usually the shadow under it that defines that edge. Be gentle when you do anything on the sides there then. Um, darkening in and blending. Here with the braids, you're never going to have one that has braids, especially, I mean, maybe. But on here, I just kind of look at the direction that it's going. I'll shade that in later because that's something you probably won't run into on yours. Uh, under the chin always gets quite dark because it's a shadow that comes in. I'm going to figure out where that goes to. Finish that out. And the sword. Now real quick put the sword in. And I just do start and stop of where it goes. So somewhere around there. And so this becomes total shadow up next to the edge of the sword. Okay, somewhere like that. And darken in next to his neck. Another part of the sword that comes out there. There's a curl that comes here. Deepen that in in a minute. Just going to add some shadows. You should never probably draw this fast because you will not be as fast of a drawer as I have become over the years. I actually was a super slow drawer when I first started drawing. Again, I've trained myself to be able to do this a little faster for you guys. So this is kind of getting around to where it's looking more realistic now. I am nowhere near done, but I want you to get the feel. I'm going to keep this next so the creases, if you do have anything in clothing especially, creases, it's kind of triangles basically that are light and dark. So I'm just going to create the light triangles here and I'm going to shade around where the light triangles are to leave them light. So, go in here, go around the edges of these. Mm -hmm. 
and hair. Hair is the hardest thing to draw next to the nose, probably is about the second hardest. Hair is deceiving, and you should never ever like follow every strand of hair down on somebody. Um, and actually, I might pull off the other side of this because there's more hair showing on the other side than this. This one, all I'm gonna do is do where the little wisps are here. And here I'm doing more of each hair than I normally would. The rest of the hair that's showing up out here is true darkness. So I would just shade in the area and then blend across. And even though I know that that is strands of hair, I never ever put in each strand of hair as you go along. Um, I'm gonna real quick pull off this side to show you how to do hair which is lighter. That or one of these that has lighter hair in it. Let me find real quick. Okay, this one. I have the other side. Okay, so this one, I have the darkness over here on this side, and then basically what you do is you find where the highlights are and you use your eraser after you've done the, the highlights in. I'm gonna real quick put a couple of curls in here. So here what I would do is um, shade in that direction. And again, I'm not using the tip of my, my pencil. Shade in the direction. The ends out here are gonna get quite dark because they're back in shadow. And coming up here, there's shadow too, so again, just follow the direction. And this turns into total darkness. This is, and this I can actually use the tip of the pencil. I just wanna be careful that I don't end up setting it in too hard in an area that I need to erase back later. But that would be that area. Give it a good blend so you get kind of that medium tone everywhere. And then I would go back in and I would look for the curls. So here I've got that coming this way. Again, I'm not following it all the way up. All I'm doing is finding the highlights. And then I could go back in and actually add in deep parts if there actually is truly deep shadows going on in any of the spots. And um, showing you the final of this one, you can see how that happens in the hair on there. I have the, the wisps coming out over on this side, mainly darkness, just a little bit of, of shadows coming into there. Um, after I've done all of the shading on the, the hat up here or the scarf, um, I can go back in and with the tip of my pencil, I can put in some of those kind of areas. Uh, at this point, I would want to go and set it across the room for myself and don't skip this stage. Set it across the room, set the drawing right next to it so that you can see what's going on. Walk away from it and I want you not to look at it when you're walking away from it. Go about 20 feet away from it turn around and look back. And at that stage, you can decide whether or not you can still see things on it. Like if you can still see the eyes, a lot of times you don't get dark enough with the eyes. I had a horrible time learning to draw dark. I was one of the light drawers that the professor was always coming up and saying, just a little darker, just a little darker. So I know where you're coming from and I also know what it can become. So trust me when I do the same thing that my professor did to me, just a little darker. And when you walk away from it, it should look like a photograph still. If it doesn't, you look at it and you figure out, okay, I need to darken in the pupil of the eye a little bit more. You take it down, you darken that in, you put it back up, you walk away from it. The reason not to look at it when you walk away from it is that it kind of resets your brain. When you turn around and look at it again, you get another look and another, another feel of what it looks like away from you. Plus, you're looking at it up instead of down on a piece of paper. I've done that where I've accidentally put like an eye too low or something like that. I spent hours and hours and hours, and I didn't have the second half here next to this. I was drawing a bigger, bigger piece. 
And I walked back away from it and I went, oh my gosh, I thought I was totally done and the one eye was like an inch lower than it really should be. So I got to go back and erase and put the eye back in where it should be. So um, do yourself a favor and do this a few steps along the way. You know, after you get the main stuff on there, check it out, see if everything looks correct. In this situation, you truly do have that second side there to be able to go back and look at. So check and see if your measurements are correct. If you ask me if something doesn't look correct on it, it's the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna set this on here and line it up and I'm gonna look. You can also peek behind actually doing this back and forth a couple of times. Your eyes kind of fix on that spot and can feel, figure it out too. Um, the other thing is if you have troubles drawing one of the parts, it's gonna sound weird but I'm gonna tell you to flip it over because again your brain fills in a lot of things that you think looks right. If you flip it over it takes away what your brain is trying to do and it actually makes you see what's going on. And you also have an easier time drawing with your right hand than your left hand or whatever hand you're dominant with a lot of times. So that puts when you're drawing, you don't have to cross over, puts it on the same side that you're actually drawing on with the hand and you can see better. Okay, questions? All right, good deal.